Are we on? Okay, this is the 28th time I've made this film because it's very sad and touching and I have bad news. Actually, no, I don't have bad news. I have good news. I had my colonoscopy today and everything is a-okay. No need for uh, follow-up, no need for consultations, anything. The guy didn't see anything abnormal in there. Um, no, he was, uh, he was confident there, uh, there's nothing going on in there that, uh, well, he found this, he found that in there and was wearing a toque, um, which I thought was weird. Um, but, uh, anyways, that, that was the only thing he found kidding jokes. I'm just joking. So I wanted to do this colonoscopy for a couple reasons. Um, if you know me, you will know that uh, early 2019, I started finding a little bit of blood in my jogging shorts. I'm not going to get gross here, but it was enough to cause me to start going to the uh, uh, emergency and then finally to my own doctor who just took me on this year. Shout out to Dr. Brad Duick. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we determined there's nothing to be that worried about. Um, and this was after a digital exam, if you know what I mean. Um, but because I'm in my 50s, uh, Dr. Duick uh, ordered me a colonoscopy. So fast forward to now, I began preparations for my, uh, my exam. Friday at three, and uh, why Friday at three? My colonoscopy was on Monday, today. You are not supposed to eat solids, I think it's like 24 hours ahead of your colonoscopy. So as of Saturday midnight, I was not allowed to eat any solid foods. And I could only have clear liquids, coffee was included. Luckily, I don't, it's not clear, but apparently basically no dyed drinks like heavily dyed purple or reds, anything that's going to interfere with the, um, with the scope, um, and no grains and no corn and right brown rice, stuff like that. So I started fasting on Friday, 3 PM. And I did that because I wanted to see what it was like to go two, uh, two and a half days without eating solid food, any food, which was fine. Actually, I was surprised how easy it was. Um, I did have a few weak moments Saturday night. I had a little boiled potato, uh, but that was it. Everything else was liquid and just basically water, coffee, and Gatorade. So on Saturday, yeah. So that was Saturday. Sunday, starting at 6 p.m., which was last night, I had to start drinking that stuff. And basically what you have to do is, uh, so starting at 6 p.m., I had to take 250 mils of that every 10 minutes until I drank two liters of it. And let me tell you, this stuff is the worst tasting shit you could ever put in your mouth, um, probably besides shit. Uh, pun intended, but uh, to get around that, tip number one is have that stuff as cold as possible. Get it near freezing. And then um, tip number two is I would take my 250 mil glass and I would chug back as much as I could before I would gag and then I would rinse out with Gatorade. And now I wouldn't swallow the Gatorade because I would end up drinking too much uh, total liquids. So I'd rinse it out with uh, orange Gatorade for me and then spit it out into the sink. And then I did that every 10 minutes until I consumed two liters of that stuff. It almost took me two hours to get two liters into me. Um, that's how bad that stuff tastes. Um, so once the solutions in your body, for me, it took an hour and 24 minutes before the medical ingredients kicked in and I started evacuating my bowels. Uh, the first couple of evacuations were pretty nasty. Um, sorry to gross you out, 
But after that, they were just water discharge out of your butthole. Um, and that was really it. Uh, following that, uh, I evacuated, I don't know, a dozen times maybe, and then I went to bed. My exam was um, my, my exam was this morning at about 9.30, so I had to get up at 3 a.m., which is okay for me because that's a normal work workday shift. I had, to, uh, I had to get up at 3 a.m. and do the second liter of that jug. So same thing, 250 mils every 10 minutes until you had the two liters inside your body, and then you start... Um, pissing it out again and then uh, yeah that was it I um, had a few naps in between rushes to the to the bathroom and then uh, yeah got my ride for the um, for the exam because they they dope you and you're not supposed to drive so uh, my buddy Kevin shout out to Kevin for uh, using his day off to drive me to the hospital and then pick me up so once I got there, I checked in, filled out some paperwork, uh, stripped down naked, got the gown on. They hooked up the intravenous to me. They took my pulse, blood pressure. They wheeled me into the room. The doctor said, how you doing? Good, okay, roll over on your side. Um, and then he um, already had the intravenous tube inside me, so then he put the, the drug in there. And I'm pretty sure I was awake. I was lucid for this whole thing. I don't recall um, being completely unconscious and waking up like, uh, ow, ow, ow. Um, I, as you know, I had, uh, I've had two dental surgeries this, this year and both times I was put out and I mean put right the fuck out. And it, it was awesome. Um, and I woke up pretty groggy and pretty out of it. This time, there was nothing. Uh, in fact, it was so mild that I'm pretty sure I was awake for the whole thing. Um, uh, we went for lunch. I took Kevin out for lunch uh, for doing that for me. And uh, yeah, I was fine. Like I had uh, my first meal was uh, Belgian waffles <laughs> and, uh, and, and coffee. So yeah, things are good. Things are good. When I had my dental surgery, uh, no, there was no way. I was get me home as soon as I can, and, and I would just pass out on the couch or in bed. So all in all, everything went well. It, uh, it was over before it started, and, you know, I'm glad I did it. And anybody out there in their 50s, uh, man or woman, you should start thinking about getting the exam done. I guess the only real inconvenience of it is, you know, drinking that jug of peg light. It is just fucking nasty. But, um, you know, it's not unbearable. I did it. You know, anybody can do it. It's just unpleasant. And I guess you, you got to get over the uh, personal violation stigma. They're just doctors. They've seen a thousand assholes. They don't care what yours looks like. So, you know, go do it. There's... Um, there's uh, nothing to be lost by doing it. And there's all to be gained by doing it. Because early detection with cancer is it's just a must these days. Cause, and, you know, the earlier they can detect it, obviously the better. So if you're squeamish or you're just waiting for cancer-like symptoms to produce themselves, well, you're fucking stupid. Uh, number one, and you're irresponsible to your uh, your own health, uh, number two. So yes, I would just really encourage anybody in their 50s, talk to your family doctor, get them to, uh, to uh, uh, schedule you a, a colonoscopy and get her done. I mean, it is over like in 10 minutes and you'll know right there if there's a problem. And like I said, the only inconvenience is drinking that peg light uh, see if you can get your um, appointment scheduled for later in the afternoon so you don't have to get up at 3 a.m. to drink the last two liters of that stuff. And remember, stick to the no solid foods regimen because the cleaner you are, the better 
um, it is for them to use their scope on you. And if you are, let's say, dirty in there, they'll cancel it. And then you're going to have to rebook, wait again, and uh, drink that four liters of peg light all over again. And that enough is an incentive to follow procedures. Uh, that's really all I got. Just another shout out to Kev for doing that on your day off for me. It uh, saved Linda from calling in sick. And um, yeah, we had lunch together, so that's a bonus. And uh, I got a good ass. So we'll leave it at that. When they, they didn't really find uh, the bird in there. No, they didn't. They found this. It's an acorn. No, they didn't find anything in there. Stop jackassing around. Okay, peace out. Get your ass checked. The end.